I didn't set out to study bears. Bears just happened to come my way, and they were interesting, and there wasn't a lot that I could tell from reading the literature on them that was known about them. I learned that there were a lot more bears around here than I thought there were. All of a sudden, the woods became alive with bears. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. My name is Ben Killam. I started rehabilitating bears in 98. My interest was in studying their behavior. And so the first set of cubs that I got were very young cubs that had no experience uh, outside the den with a natural mother. Everything they were to learn, they were to learn uh, from the opportunities that I gave them by walking them, acting as a surrogate mother to them. And from that, I learned about their behavior. When I walked the bear cubs for the first time, I would go out all day long with them, and then I'd come back to do my field notes, and I'd just simply turn the video on in my head and re-walk the walk. Ben talks about being a systems thinker or being able to see things in pictures, to be able to sit and contemplate that you can walk it in the woods in your head. I can't do that. Ben um, has been very forthright and talks about his dyslexia and also is challenged with being able to read the scientific books or being able to do a lot of reading at all. I was originally diagnosed, but never really understood it when I was in kindergarten. I was never conscious of, of the fact. They just said I was very bright, but would have difficulties in school. I was considered stupid. I was considered lazy. I didn't read, and, and I didn't, you know, I had average grades. I was tested for dyslexia, and I found that my IQ was 131 on the Weschler scale, which was in the top 1%, despite my dyslexia, and I read at a third grade level. My initial attempts to get into graduate school didn't happen. I was accepted at the Thayer School of Engineering at Dartmouth as an adult student when I was 40, and they quickly put me into remedial uh, calculus, physics, and computer programming, which killed me right away. My father was Lawrence Killam, was a virologist at the Dartmouth Medical School and also an amateur ornithologist. He would spend a lot of time observing one woodpecker nest rather than trying to observe 20 to get a big data set. He also said, why do a poor job studying 20 nests when you can do a good job studying one? My dad did his bird studies as an amateur. It didn't cost him anything. He, he prided himself on the fact that, that all he needed was simple apparatus, a pair of binoculars and a small folding chair. I grew up with my father and, and I made observations for him. I knew what good observations were. His work with birds had not been a lot different from how I approached bears. 
he really didn't like modern science either. He felt, and I feel the same way, that there should be a lot more independent researchers and that science should accept them. My research has been mostly overlooked by the scientific community. There's scientists who really like what I'm doing, but they would all would like to see it in their format. I'm writing a book which pulls together the social behavior of bears, and I'm in the process of getting a, a PhD at Drexel University. I'll have an opportunity to write up my work in scientific journals so uh, science can learn what I've learned about bears. You're looking at a guy who's dedicated himself to trying to teach the world to live in a better place with animals. There's a lot of parallels that I see with the bears and human behavior, my own behavior. Squirty manipulates me, she looks right at me, she controls me. I think my work uh, potentially has a larger purpose, and that's to get humans to better understand themselves.